hey Greg buddy I know you couldn't make it so I just wanted you to know that your car is here it's on display people will have nothing but good things to say about it they love everything that you suggest to be put into the car and you can take a look now and you can see that your car is the centerpiece of the entire model display and your dad would be very proud that you had this commissioned and put it on display for him. So take a look at the big reveal, Greg. This is all you. Welcome back to the channel. After that brief introduction, I want to present to you the Pops Fiero. This car was built for Greg Peters, the winner of the auction for the Midwest Fiero Club's 40th anniversary and will be presented to him in July of this year at the 40th anniversary festival, which I will be at. And hopefully you guys will follow me here on the channel as I bring you along with me. Now, I'm recording this in March, shortly after I finish the car, and I'm not going to air it until after I present it to Greg, because I want him to be the first to see it, and I want to capture his reaction so that uh, we can all see how much he likes this, and hopefully he'll love it. I'm hoping you'll love it. Cross my fingers, Greg. Now, I did a whole lot of extra work on this car and added a whole lot of detail to it. 
which uh, I'm going to go over some of that now in case you guys haven't seen every single episode of this series, which you really should go back and watch because it's really cool. It's one of my favorite builds ever, primarily because of all the extra stuff that I added for Greg, which a bunch of it he requested and a bunch of it just came up as I was building. I just thought, hey, what if I do this? What if I do that? Which is why it takes so long. Now, we'll go over the colors. This is, to me, a bright red, which is my favorite red of any and all reds that I've ever used. It's a super heavy pigmented, rich red that lays super smooth and super bright no matter what you use it on. It's then topped off with, to me, a clear. Again, one of my favorite clears. Sprays really evenly. Now, this is all with rattle can. Um, the bottom cladding is done in Tamiya Metallic Gray, which is, that is airbrushed, and uh, came out as a really, really, really close match to the Fiero Metallic Gray lower trim. I was very happy with the coloring on that. And then the all the black trim, which, trust me, made me a nervous wreck as I was painting it. Um, it's all Tamiya Flat Black, which really gives off a nice low luster sheen once you polish it out a little bit and buff it out a little bit that really resembles the plastic cladding on the Fiero. And that covers the colors. Of, oh, the interior. Let's talk about the interior, which is a mixture of several different Tamiya grays, lights and darks, Tamiya titanium silver for the instrument cluster bezels and uh, radio faces. We have embossing powder for the carpeting. Just a whole bunch of stuff in this thing, which was a lot of fun to do. Let's uh, turn it around a little bit here. If you see on the front, there is an actual three-dimensional badge, which I made for this car. If you're familiar with my other Fiero build, I did the same thing on that one, which uh, I make by photocopying a Fiero badge, shrinking it down, and then going over it with future floor polish, which creates a nice acrylic shield over it, and it ends up looking very much like a miniature badge, like what's actually on the car. I love the way that comes out. I also added an antenna, which is removable, you know, for packing and for shipping. You can just pop it out, pop it back in. So that you don't lose it. It's the first time I've put an antenna like this on a car. And it was uh, easy, to tell you the truth. Once you plow out exactly where you want to drill the hole. And then put the antenna in. But in the future, I'll do it before I paint the body. A lot of what I thought of for this car just came up on the fly. As I'm building and I'm thinking to myself, why don't I add this? Why don't I add that? It wasn't really planned out. Not all of it anyway. Except for the stuff that Greg actually requested be put in here the other stuff is all just stuff that came up on the fly which is part of the fun of model making now we take a look here you'll notice that it has air an air intake only on the left side of the car much like the real fiero which only had an air intake on the left side now the model brings the quarter panels which are which have air intakes on both sides which is not correct I don't know why they did that for the model, but they did. And you don't have an option for the correct style, which is only on the left side. So all I have to do is fill in the other one and paint it and eliminate the air intake that is on the right side. So that we have one smooth panel as opposed to an air intake on that side. Now, let's take a look at the back. If you look in the back there, you'll see one of the items that Greg requested, which was a little bit of a challenge, but was fun nonetheless. That's Greg's dad. Now, Greg wanted to have a picture of his dad in the rear window of the car looking outward. And he sent me a few photos, and I thought this was the best choice. As it, it Here you can really see that it is him. And in the glass there... It's not 
overpowering. It doesn't just stand out, but you, if, if you're looking at the car and you'll see it, it's almost like he's in the background. Like he's always there, but not so much that it stands out, but just always with you. So uh, hope that's what uh, Greg feels about. His dad is always going to be with him. And this should be a representation of that, that his spirit is always around, basically is what I meant. And uh, Greg, I hope you like that. Now, another thing Greg recommend, requested was a license plate. One that read Dad's Heart. And there it is right there. We have our license plate. We also have a metal license plate frame. To surround the license plate. So I hope you like that, Greg. I thought that was a nice touch. I was going to add some coloring to the plate reminiscent of the real license plate, but I thought that you might like it better if it just stood out, Dad's heart there, without anything else, so it's clear and free, and anyone can see it from at any distance without it being cluttered up with anything else in the background. I thought you'd like that a little bit more. Okay. Now let's spin this little puppy around. So here we go, folks. That is the exterior of the Pop Fiero and everything that I've done to that. Really came out beautiful. I mean, it came out better than the one I built for myself. So congrats, Greg. You got a nicer one than I do. And uh, I'm very happy with the way it came out. So let's uh, just take a quick look-see at the rest of it. Okay, now we're going to come in from above. And that's because I want you to take a look at the interior of the car. Here you can see the two-tone interior. We have, much like on Greg's real car, we have the seats, which are... A light and dark gray you can see there that it's got they have some slight shading on them to really bring out the detail in the seats and add a bit more realism to them if you see back here you have one seat belt that's attached you can see the metal buckle there the metal the metal latch in the buckle now the buckles are all hand fabricated and so are the seatbelt assemblies the photo uh, latches there are the, those are photo etched and I thought it would look cool if one was actually attached to the buckle so I think that looks pretty cool and then you have the other one here on the side hanging ready for someone just to drop in and go for a drive now let's take a look at the interior here let's see if we can zoom in on that we have our entire instrument cluster and let me see if I can put a little light on that there we go you can see the instruments are in are like a reddish orange which is traditional Pontiac colors there's a steering wheel and really good representation of it this car kit really does have a really well detailed interior you can see here there's one of the buckles you can get a little better look at it if we can focus in on that whoa focusing too much right there and that's a good representation of the GM buckles that are actually in the car you can see the carpeting actually came out really nice I'm very happy with the way that embossing powder looks in there let's move out a little bit looking through the sunroof and see that there is an actual cloth headliner in there I also added let's see if I can give you a look at it there are so there's a sun visor the entire dome light assembly is in there all of those are fabricated parts none of them that comes with the kit but I thought it'd be a nice addition to the car uh, in the back here we have a I don't know if I can give you a look at it. A third brake light. Now that actually comes from a Fastback GT Fiero kit, which is 125th scale. 
but still looks pretty nice in here with in this 124 scale so that's our interior now let's take a look at another one of the details that Greg asked for now this one represents the urn that Greg's father's ashes are in he requested that I mount the make a small scale urn and mount it in the car in such a way that it would appear as if Greg's father is with him every time he goes out for a ride again that goes along with the theme of him being in the rear window as that means that his spirit will always be with Greg every time Greg jumps in and goes for a ride now if you see here I also added floor mats and it's in some of the pictures Greg sent me I saw black floor mats so I actually made some floor mats for him now the urn is actually made from wood which I had to recarve and shape and glue together to make that shape painted with uh, several with uh, to me a gloss black and then gold this thing is tiny it looks big here but it is really very very small and then this photo etched mounting bracket I wanted to create something that looked realistic like it would actually hold his urn his father's urn in place so that it wouldn't fall off as they're driving so I came up with this concoction which is if you can see there's a strut that is bolted to the floor and then it's got the two rings which hold the urn in place the top one almost appearing to be halo like again leading to the theme of his father being an angel watching over Greg as they're driving along so I thought that was a pretty nice touch Greg I hope you really like it as it's uh, a little bit challenging so now that we've seen the entire car and this project comes to an end this was one of my favorite projects now I mean this has been a car that is gonna have a lot of meaning to Greg and his family I hope it really does because I put uh, a lot of time and a lot of effort into it because I wanted to do the best job that I could on it. So, Greg, I hope you're really happy with it. And I hope it brings back plenty of good memories for you and the family. All right, guys, let's talk about the chassis now, which the chassis is one of my favorite parts of this car. I know it's kind of weird to say, but it is one of my favorite parts of this car. The detail work in here, I was very, very happy with the way it came out such as the coolant pipes that run on each side of the car. Now, those are not separate parts. They're actually molded to the chassis, but I love the way they look like they are separate parts now. The gas tank that's in the center of the car, which again, with the paintwork, it looks like these are all separate parts that were attached to the chassis, and they weren't. It's all molded together, but it's so well molded and so clean and crisp that it just looks fantastic when it's all together. Okay, here we have the steering gear, which really also a lot of detail work went into that. I added an actual steering damper to it just to make it look a little more realistic. Here we have the undercarriage. You have our exhaust with all the heat treated effects. Very pleased with the way that came out. Going to our chrome trumpets that were all chrome were chromed out with the Gundam chrome pen, which I really, really like. You have the heat shields here. Those are all done with, you can see them behind the muffler and here around the cat. Those were all done with uh, bare metal foil. And I really like that look. The straps around the gas tank were also done in bare metal foil. It's just a really, really good looking undercarriage. I am very pleased with it. And I got to say that Monogram did an excellent job with the undercarriage on this car. Now we'll take a look at the engine and some of the modifications that we have there. 
Now, one of the things that I really like about this particular model, which I've never done before on one of these Fiero models, and I have built a few, is that I installed magnets to the engine covers so that they will never fall off. And you can remove the deck lid if you want to, if you really want to look at the entire engine cover without anything in the way. Now, these mag they lift right off, and you can remove them. And when you put it down, they lock into place with magnets, which are installed underneath. You see under there, I think if you, if you watch the videos, you can see exactly how I did that. And this allows you to be able to remove everything and look at all the detailing that I have added to the interior, such as all the spark plug wires, the throttle cable, the cruise control servo, the dog bone. We have an EGR valve, all sorts of cooling hardware. There's even a really tiny fuel injection rail in there, which you'll probably never notice, but it's pretty cool that it's there. Added all sorts of details. If you're familiar with this kit, you'll be able to pick out for yourself exactly how many details you can see just uh, poking out from you here. We also have the carpeting, which is completely flocked with the a representation for the trunk light. And here was one of the last additions that just hit me out of the blue. I put a latch and release solenoid on the deck lid because I just, I don't know, I just felt that, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I did this? And so then I went ahead and did it just to make life more difficult for myself. So there's a ton of detail in there. You can go back on the channel and, and see exactly how much I did and all the detail that I added to it. And here we have our tail lights, which are trimmed with bare metal foil, the highly reflective chrome bare metal foil behind the tail lights, which gives them a really cool, almost holographic 3D effect. I love the way that looks on the tail lights. And then they're painted with the Tamiya clear red and to me a black for the center. Okay, I think that goes and covers just about everything there is to cover on this car. Anything I may have missed, if you watch the series, you'll see everything because I've documented it all for great. Okay, let's take a look at the rest. The wheel, the wheels actually come from another Pontiac kit the I think it was an MPC kit Knight Rider Trans Am now these wheels I had to pretty much fabricate a mounting solution for these as they didn't really fit this car as the mo as a Trans Am and this monogram kit have two complete different wheel mounting options and but they really look great on the car and they really give off that GT style that Greg has on his with these wheels on it. These wheels are actually from the 1986 and a half GT and were used all the way up until 1988 where they were slightly modified and uh, painted different colors. But up until then, these gray wheels were used in every GT from 1986 to 1987 uh, exclusively. But Greg has them on his, and coincidentally, my buddy Dave just put them on his car, and they do look great. Now, they were painted in Tamiya gray, and then the spokes were highlighted by using... To me, a panel line accent color in black, which really brings all of these spokes from the lace wheel design to life. So I'm really very happy with the way that turned out. Now, my goal was to give Greg the really high end model experience, like the Automodello. 88 Fiero GT, which I recently acquired. And I really wanted this car to give him the same type of high-end model experience that this car gives. I think they both look great together. 
and I'm really hoping that uh, Greg agrees when he sees it. Which, depending on how this video started after I presented it to him, he probably already has. And that one on the top is the one that I built for myself. And yes, you can see that Greg's car is way better than the one I built for myself. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with a couple of beauty shots. And uh, that's going to be it for the Greg Peters Pops Fiero build. And I'll see you guys on the next one.